Hello and welcome to Recyclist. It's June 30th, 2023. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and this is your weekly roundup of all the biggest news stories in the world of waste, gas, and energy presented by Diamond Scientific. We begin this week with a quick stock update of five of the highest performing stocks within the industry. As of close of business, June 29th, 2023, the waste management stock is currently sitting at $169.61 per share. Chevron core stock is currently sitting at $156.24 per share. Chenier Energy is currently sitting at $151.21. Vanek Low Carbon Energy is sitting at $119.98, and Vanguard ESG is sitting at $77.44. Again, all stock prices as of close of business, June 29th, 2023. And now jumping into the news, a huge story coming out of the biogas sector this week as Ecological Laboratories Incorporated announced a couple days ago the launch of its new biogas series portfolio. In their own words, this portfolio is designed to revolutionize the waste to energy proposition by significantly increasing biogas generation and electricity output in anaerobic digesters and lagoons used in dairy, hog, and food processing operations across agricultural, industrial, and municipal facilities. Specifically tailored for each stage, hydrolysis, acidogenesis, acetogenesis, and featured products dedicated to methanogenesis, these cutting-edge solutions are currently undergoing field trials in multiple locations, including the United States, among others like Northern Ireland, Poland, and Vietnam. Future demonstrations are planned for Brazil, Ecuador, Colombia, Canada, and Singapore. A spokesman for ELI said, quote, Our technology has demonstrated an impressive ability to improve methane concentration by 3 to 8 percent, increase methane capacity through a 20 percent enhanced throughput, and reduce input costs such as iron hydroxide for hydrogen sulfide reduction by over 50 percent. Operating under the anaerobic conditions necessary for methane production, our unique consortium formulation of several heterotrophic bacteria, purple non-sulfur bacteria, and methanogens excels in degrading recalcitrant compounds to maximize methane production, end quote. And in addition, beyond methane output, the technology uniquely addresses accumulated digester solids and foam while reducing undesirable H2S. Now moving to the Environmental Protection Agency, this week the EPA announced its framework for addressing new uses of per- and polyfluoral alkyl substances, otherwise known as PFAS. The framework outlines the organization's planned approach when reviewing new PFAS and new uses of PFAS to ensure that, before these chemicals are allowed to enter into commerce, the EPA will undertake an extensive evaluation to ensure they pose no harm to human health and the environment. Mikhail Friedhoff, an assistant administrator for the Office of Chemical Safety and Pollution, said, quote, For decades, PFAS have been released into the environment without the necessary measures in place to protect people's health. But with this framework, the EPA is working to reduce the risk posed by these persistent chemicals, end quote. Under the Toxic Substances Control Act, Section 5, the Environmental Protection Agency is required to review new chemicals, including new PFAS and new uses of PFAS within 90 days, assess the potential risks to human health and the environment of the chemical, and make one of five possible risk determinations. When potential risks are identified, the EPA will then take action to mitigate those risks before the chemical can enter commerce. And this past week, we got an update from the Polypropylene Recycling Coalition as the Recycling Partnership announced an update to their efforts, saying they have provided $10.3 million in grant funding to 41 separate materials recovery facilities to support new and improved polypropylene capture and recycling community education to residents. The partnership estimates once these material recycling facilities can install and operationalize new equipment, these 
investments will result in more than 42 million new pounds of polypropylene recovered annually for processing in growing U.S. market and ultimately gives this material another life as it gets incorporated into new products. As a result of the coalition's investment, 34.2 million people in the U.S. will now have new or improved ability to recycle polypropylene as part of their recycling programs, keeping valuable recyclables out of landfills. With 41 grantees at varying stages of their projects, ranging from ordering of their new equipment to installation and operations, one-third of the grantees have had their equipment in place long enough to provide sufficient data on the impact impact of the grants. The reporting facilities collectively captured 1.3 million pounds of polypropylene annually pre-grant. Post-grant, they are now capturing 11 million pounds of polypropylene annually, a nine-fold increase. Translated into recycling rates, this represents an estimated increase from 1.2% to 10%. Brittany Lavalle, Senior Director of Materials Advancement at the Partnership, said, quote, In the last few years, there has been notable investment in polypropylene recycling. While polypropylene is undoubtedly making progress as a recyclable material through the coalition's support and other meaningful investment, much more work and investment will be needed to make it universally accepted as a recyclable material, end quote. And now just a reminder that Recyclist is brought to you by Diamond Scientific, an industry leader in gas analysis, instrumentation, and solutions. Do make sure to visit them online at diamondsci.com. That's diamondsci.com. Or call them at 321-223-7500. Now on with the news. A couple days ago, Reda Vivus, a leader in battery recycling technology, and Amos Manufacturing Incorporated, a prominent manufacturer specializing in shredding equipment, announced a strategic partnership aimed at creating an advanced battery recycling equipment system that combines Reda Vivus's expertise in battery neutralization with Amos's cutting-edge manufacturing capabilities. Both parties recognize the value of collaboration in promoting their shared vision. Jeff Boudouin, vice president of operations at Amos, said, quote, The skills that each team brings to this endeavor will truly produce an efficient and unique solution to a growing issue in the battery recycling industry. We are excited to bring a customized solution that utilizes the strengths of both companies to the marketplace, end quote. And now moving to our nation's northern border, a proposal to put a full-scale anaerobic digestion facility on Simiamu First Nation Reserve lands has moved into its closing phase, with word this week of $14.4 million in federal funding. The facility will be jointly owned by the band's economic arm, Simiamu Limited Liability Corporation, and Andion North America, and will be the first major economic development project on the reserve, which sits at the U.S.-Canada border at Peace Arc Provincial Park. Simiamu First Nation Chief Harley Chapel said much thought was given to the Renewable Natural Gas Project, which, quote, aligns with our core values to preserve and protect the natural environment while bringing economic benefits to the nation. This project set a new precedent in British Columbia for environmental stewardship by creating clean, carbon-negative renewable energy, end quote. And lastly, U.S. renewable natural gas producer Montauk Renewables Incorporated said it plans to build an RNG landfill gas project in Orange County, California, with a nameplate capacity of around 3.6 billion BTUs per day. The RNG site will operate in addition to a nearby renewable electric generation facility of about 20 megawatts and will handle the biogas volumes in excess of the existing capacity of the power generation site. The site's target capacity is based on currently forecasted biogas feedstock volumes that are projected to be available from the host landfill at the time of the RNG facilities commissioning, which is scheduled for 2026. The planned project will be the second landfill gas to energy site developed by Montauk in Orange County. Its launch will extend the company's gas rights by 20 years. And that has been your Recyclist News Update for June 30th, 2023, presented by Diamond Scientific. I've been your host, 
Eric Provost, and I will see you back next week for another episode of Recyclist. Thank you.